Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our channel. Today, we have an important topic to discuss, Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. It's a viral disease that has been in the news lately, and we thought it would be crucial to shed some light on this serious health issue. So, let's dive right into it. What is Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever? Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, or CCHF, is a severe illness caused by a tick-borne virus. It was first identified in Crimea in 1944 and later in the Congo, hence the name. This disease belongs to the Banyavridi family of viruses and is primarily transmitted to humans through ticks. Brief History of CCHF CCHF was first identified in 1944 in the Crimean Peninsula. At that time, Soviet scientists were investigating an outbreak of hemorrhagic fever among Soviet troops engaged in World War II. The virus resurfaced in 1969 when an outbreak occurred in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Due to this re-emergence, the disease was named Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Scientists soon realized that ticks played a crucial role in the transmission of the virus to humans. Ticks belonging to the Hylama genus were identified as the primary vectors of CCHF. Over the years, CCHF has been reported in various regions across the world. It is endemic in parts of Africa, Asia, the Middle East, and certain regions of Europe. The distribution of the disease is closely linked to the distribution of the tick vectors in the animal reservoirs. CCHF gained attention due to its high case fatality rate and potential for causing outbreaks. The disease is considered a significant public health concern, especially in regions where it is endemic. Scientists and public health organizations have been actively studying CCHF to better understand its transmission dynamics, clinical presentation, and potential treatment options. About Causal Agent of CCHF The causal agent of Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, CCHF, is a virus belonging to the nirovirus genus, which is a part of the Banyavaridae family. The virus responsible for CCHF is known as the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus, CCHFV. CCHFV is an enveloped virus. The viral envelope contains glycoproteins, crucial for viral attachment and entry into host cells. The two main glycoproteins of CCHFV are referred to as GN and GC. The viral genome of CCHFV consists of single-stranded RNA. The RNA genome is segmented into three distinct parts, referred to as small, S, medium, M, and large, L, segments. Each segment encodes different viral proteins. RNA genome of virus is protected by a nucleocapsid. The nucleocapsid is formed by viral proteins that tightly bind to the viral RNA, providing stability to the genome. The CCHFV genome encodes several viral proteins essential for its replication and infection. These proteins include the nucleoprotein, N, RNA-dependent RNA polymerase, L, and nonstructural proteins. How CCHF transmitted? Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever, CCHF, is primarily transmitted to humans through ticks, particularly those of the Hylama genus, serve as the primary vectors for CCHF. These ticks become infected with the Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever virus, CCHFV, when they feed on infected animals, typically livestock such as cattle, sheep, and goats. Once infected, ticks can remain carriers of the virus throughout their life cycle. When an infected tick bites a human, the virus can be transmitted through its saliva into the person's bloodstream. This usually occurs during outdoor activities. It's important to note that humans do not transmit the virus directly to other humans. CCHF can also be transmitted through direct contact with the blood or tissues of infected animals, particularly livestock. This can occur during the handling, slaughtering, or butchering of infected animals or through the consumption of raw or undercooked meat from infected animals. Additionally, healthcare workers and individuals in close contact with CCHF patients are at risk of infection if they come into contact with the blood or bodily fluids of infected individuals. Pathogenicity of CCHF After exposure to CCHFV, the virus enters the body through breaches in the skin or mucous membranes, such as tick bites or contact with infected blood or tissues. The virus primarily targets endothelial cells, which line the blood vessels, and cells of the mononuclear phagocyte system. Once inside the host, the virus replicates rapidly and spreads throughout the body, leading to a systemic infection. CCHF virus triggers an immune response which include activation of various immune cells, release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, and the production of antibodies. 
The immune response to CCHFV infection can also contribute to the pathogenesis by tissue damage and organ dysfunction. CCHF virus infection causes significant damage to the endothelial cells lining blood vessels. The virus induces endothelial dysfunction and permeability, leading to leakage of fluid, blood, and immune cells into surrounding tissues and give rise to characteristic hemorrhagic manifestations. CCHFV infection can result in coagulation abnormalities. The virus triggers the activation of the clotting cascade and the release of clotting factors, resulting in disseminated intravascular coagulation DIC, which result in excessive bleeding and formation of small blood clots throughout the body. Severe cases of CCHF can result in multiple organ dysfunction syndrome MODS, where multiple organs, such as the liver, kidneys, and lungs, may be affected with case fatality rate can range from 10% to 40%. What are the symptoms of CCHF? CCHF can cause a wide range of symptoms. Some cases may present with a milder symptom while some cases may progress to severe manifestations. In early stage, fever, headache, muscle aches, fatigue, dizziness, nausea and vomiting, gastrointestinal symptoms may occur. In severe cases, CCHF can cause bleeding tendencies, resulting in nosebleeds, bleeding gums, gastrointestinal bleeding. In some patients, small, pinpoint-sized red or purple spots on the skin called petechia may appear. In some cases, patients may experience confusion, agitation, and neurological manifestations such as tremors or seizures. CCHF can also cause respiratory distress and difficulty breathing in severe cases. In some cases, yellowing of the skin and eyes, jaundice, may be observed due to liver involvement. Patients may experience severe abdominal pain and diarrhea with vomiting. How to Diagnose CCHF Prompt diagnosis and early recognition of CCHF are crucial for appropriate management and implementation of infection control measures. Diagnosing of CCHF involves Clinical evaluation A thorough assessment of the patient's symptoms, medical history, and exposure to potential risk factors, such as tick bites or contact with infected animals, is crucial in suspecting CCHF. Serological tests Blood samples are collected to detect the presence of specific antibodies produced in response to CCHFV infection. ELISAs and IFAs are commonly used to detect CCHFV-specific IgM and Ig antibodies. Molecular tests. PCR assays are employed to detect and confirm the presence of CCHF virus genetic material, RNA, in blood or other body fluids. PCR testing is particularly useful in the early stages of infection when viral loads are high. Viral isolation. Attempts may be made to isolate the CCHFV from blood or other body fluids in specialized laboratories. However, this method is more time-consuming and requires strict biosafety measures. Epidemiological information. Gathering information on potential exposure to ticks, contact with infected animals, or a history of travel to CCHF endemic areas can aid in the diagnosis. What is treatment for CCHF? Currently, there is no specific antiviral treatment available for CCHF. So, treatment mainly involves supportive care and infection control measures to relieve symptoms and prevent complications. Treatment approach for CCHF include Hospitalization Patients with suspected or confirmed CCHF should be admitted to the hospital, preferably in isolation units with strict infection control measures to prevent the spread of the virus. Supportive care this involves maintaining the patient's vital signs, managing pain and fever, providing intravenous fluids to prevent dehydration, and addressing any other symptoms or complications that may arise. Blood and Fluid Management CCHF can cause severe bleeding, leading to low platelet count and coagulation abnormalities. Appropriate blood and fluid management, including transfusion of platelets and fresh frozen plasma, may be necessary to address these complications. Control of Bleeding in cases of severe bleeding, interventions such as surgical procedures or endoscopic techniques may be required to control the bleeding source. Anticipatory management. Since CCHF can progress rapidly, healthcare providers need to anticipate and promptly manage potential complications, such as liver dysfunction, kidney failure, and respiratory distress. How to prevent CCHF? Here are key strategies for preventing CCHF. Tick control. If possible, Avoid visiting or spending time in areas known to have high tick populations, especially during peak activity seasons. When in tick-prone areas, wear long-sleeved shirts, long pants, and closed-toe shoes. 
Apply insect repellents containing DEET to exposed skin and clothing. After spending time outdoors, thoroughly check your body for ticks, including hidden areas like the scalp, armpits, and groin. Promptly remove any attached ticks using tweezers. Personal hygiene and sanitation. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water, especially after outdoor activities or handling animals. Clean and disinfect any wounds or cuts immediately to reduce the risk of infection. When handling animals, especially those known to be reservoirs of CCHFV, wear gloves, masks, and other appropriate protective gear. Take precautions to prevent direct contact with blood, tissues, or other body fluids of animals, especially when animals are sick or have recently died. Infection control in healthcare facilities. In healthcare settings and laboratories, follow strict infection control practices, including appropriate use of PPE proper handling and disposal of sharps and medical waste, and adherence to standard precautions. Disease surveillance and awareness. Implement surveillance systems to monitor and detect CCHF cases promptly. Early detection allows for rapid response and implementation of control measures. Raise awareness among the general public about CCHF, its transmission, and preventive measures. It's important to note that there is currently no licensed vaccine available for CCHF prevention. Therefore, Preventive measures focus on reducing exposure to ticks and implementing proper hygiene practices. Conclusion By implementing preventive measures, raising awareness, and ensuring early detection and appropriate management, we can reduce the impact of CCHF. That's all for today's video. We hope this information has been helpful and raised awareness about Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever. Stay safe, take precautions, and until next time, remember to prioritize your health. Thank you for watching.